Oren Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, and the other top leaders of the NFO are traveling pretty much around the clock, attending as many of the state NFO conventions as they can. This is the season for them in the late summer and fall, looking toward the national convention in December at St. Louis. When Staley addressed the Iowa NFO convention at Marshalltown, he was in a low-key mood as he explained to the delegates. The NFO has built the structure for collective bargaining. So what remains is for the leaders to explain clearly and briefly how it works so farmers and ranchers can make up their own minds. Here's what Staley said about NFO being competitive. He takes up the subject in each commodity, starting with dairy bargaining. I know in dairy, with the addition of the new outlets, that we have improved our competitive price or our price up to where it's a competitive level. From dairy, Staley moves his attention to the NFO program for hogs. In hogs, you remember, when we started out with a 10 cents above the average of the Iowa Southern Minnesota interior quotes. Today, we've got contracts at 75 cents over the top of the mid-session quotes, plus transportation paid by the packer. Now this means that those hogs have to be, and if anybody's going to write in the press about it, I hope they add this to it, that these hogs have to be put up on a graded basis so that the proper price is being paid for each grade of hogs. He spoke next of the accomplishments in cattle bargaining. In the last few months, in the last four or five months, we have been able to increase our formulations in cattle two to three dollars a hundred weight over what they were in the beef. That has happened within the last six months. And Staley talks of one of the oldest principles of the National Farmers Organization, the nationwide structure. And I can tell you with confidence that we have been able to build a system and a structure nationwide that can get the producers, the farmers, a competitive price while they're building a nationwide structure for bargaining. And to me, that is the best bargain the farmers in this nation ever had offered to them. And a competitive price means sometimes we may be a little over somebody else or over the top of everybody or just about the same, or maybe a little below, but it's always in the ballpark now with the improvements we've made in our price structure. It's a competitive price. And in conclusion, the NFO president made this observation. Now the decision is up to the farmers in this country. I'll do all I can to inform them, all I can to persuade them to help themselves. We all must work at this together. I can't do it, nor can you do it, but all of us together can. And then we decide in the end as farmers whether or not we are going to stand together with enough of the production that we can price our products. And for the first time in the history of the world, farmers can say, we do have equity with the rest of the economy and the other people throughout the nation. It's up to you. Thank you. Today we brought you highlights from the address of Oren Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, as he addressed the Iowa State NFO Convention at Marshalltown. He said the structure for bargaining has been built and that now it's up to farmers to decide on using it in moving toward cost of production contracts. Ed Tiverdi is president of the Nebraska State NFO. For their convention this year, Tiverdi invited the heads of other farm organizations to address the NFO delegates. First, he announced a four-point statement of agreement among them, which had been the subject of conferences and discussions for the past several weeks preceding the convention. All this was a way of saying to this country, that farmers can and will speak with a unified voice on important issues affecting agriculture. 
Here is Nebraska State NFO President Ed Tiverti as he spoke at Kearney during that convention. The first one being that we all feel that our price for our production needs to come from the marketplace, not from the federal government. The second thing is that we need to move towards a balanced budget in this country and without a fair price for agriculture, we'll never get there. The third thing is that we need to do something about the import qualification, basically meat. And I think that you'll be told the legislation that is being presented, that they at least have to adhere to the same qualifications as our domestically produced beef and uh, products. And the fourth one is that Secretary of Agriculture has come out and said that he is uh, not going to do anything about the feed grain prices of those that did not participate in the program, either to buy on the market or to uh, let them get a loan that he's going to stand by the stand he made. And we feel that uh, as Secretary of Agriculture, under the circumstances he's got, that he is doing as good a job as possible to do. And we feel that by starting something in the state of Nebraska, rather than going to the point of things we disagree upon, we're going to tell the people the things we agree upon, and that the American farmer's power is his production. One of the top leaders of the American agriculture movement is a Nebraskan, Stan DeBoer. Here's what he said to the NFO convention. If we can get all of the farm organizations to stand under one flag, there's no question about whether or not we can win. And as far as the goals that we're after, I think probably the biggest percentage of the people here want one thing, and that's a fair price for their production that will allow them to pay their bills and return to the land the next spring. That's what most farmers are after. And here's the statement of Pat McKinley, president of the Nebraska Stock Growers. Our association is glad that we can be here to help to maybe direct and form some of these four points. In regard to the points, uh, I think that the marketplace of the association is sure that the marketplace is the only place that we can rectify the problems that agriculture has got. We're sure of that. And Bill Critchie, president of the Livestock Feeders Association in Nebraska, as he talked to the NFO delegates. The point of trying to get the pricing being developed in the marketplace, of course, has always been pretty foremost in our policies. We think this is a must. We sure don't want government in there doing our pricing for us. And here is the statement of Wendell Gangwich, president of the Nebraska Farm Bureau Federation. In visiting and talking through several meetings the last several months, and I'm enthused and encouraged by it. Uh, I've said all along that we had, basically, we had the same long-range objectives. We may have had some different methods of achieving some of them, but really we were concerned about the same things as farm people and farm producers. And so I'm, I'm real encouraged and real pleased to be a part of it, and I'm proud that we as farm organizations are talking together and pursuing the concerns that do affect us as farmer producers. Today you heard the statements of five farm leaders from Nebraska. Ed Tverde of the NFO, Stan DeBoer of the AAM, Pat McKinley of the Stock Growers, Bill Critchie of the Livestock Feeders, and Wendell Gangwich of the Farm Bureau. Points upon which they agree. Number one, that prices should be gotten in the marketplace. Members of the Canadian Parliament visited Washington recently to talk to several members of Congress about their two countries agreeing on a higher world wheat price. Both the Canadians and Americans believe that because the U.S. and Canada supply 65% of the wheat moving in world trade, the two countries could set wheat prices just like the Arabs set oil prices, and that they ought to get together to put the price up to reflect cost of production plus a reasonable profit to producers. Ben Stong, who covers Washington for the NFO Reporter, was there, and we have him here to tell us about it. It was the second meeting of Canadians and U.S. Senators, Phil. They met first in Winnipeg in August. Senator George McGovern of South Dakota, Senator John Melcher of Montana, and Senator Hel Henry Bellman of Oklahoma made the trip. And you are right. 
They all support a Canadian-American international price agreement. They are advised Australia will go along too. Well, what mechanism would they use to set the price? The Canadians say that if the United States will put its price support loan for wheat up from the present 235 per bushel level to 375 or four dollars, they will honor it on all their sales abroad. That commitment was made by the head of the Canadian Wheat Board, and it handles all grain export sales out of Canada. Well, why don't we go ahead and do it then? And the Carter administration isn't ready to go along. They're involved in multilateral trade negotiations in Geneva with nearly all of the countries of the world. There is an international grains agreement among both importing and exporting countries related to GATT, or the General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs. The administration wants to handle grain trades through the agreement involving 31 importing and exporting countries instead of just an exporter's cartel. Well, are the grains agreement negotiators getting anywhere? Not really. Melcher said during the discussions with the Canadians that they are working on an international Rube Goldberg. The European countries have flatly refused to accept a minimum and maximum price corridor in the agreement. So the exporting countries are trying to work out a notional price system. The notional price has never been reduced to a dollars and cents figure yet. Then there would be six action points. If prices went down below the notional price a certain amount, the nations would confer. If the prices still dropped to a certain specified level, the nations would all buy wheat and put into a targeted 30 million ton reserve. If prices still went down to a third action point, there would be more conferences. There are three similar action points on the upside when prices rise. Well, what, what about just raising our loan, as the Canadians suggest? Our Secretary of Agriculture has power to do it. But, of course, he's a part of the Carter administration involved in the multilateral negotiation. The only other way to raise the loan is for Congress to pass a law, if you can get enough votes in Congress to do it, and then pass it over a presidential veto, which takes two-thirds of the House and Senate, and that is an impossible number. You sound pessimistic. Is there any future in any of this for the wheat grower? There is one glimmer of hope, Bill. Secretary of Agriculture Bob Berglund once started talking to the Canadians himself, but he got called off by the White House trade negotiators. He recently told an audience in Montana that if the grains agreement negotiations break down, he will consult the Canadians again. The best guess is that the grains agreement negotiations will fail. Then, if Berglund can keep, can keep his word and go direct to the Canadians, something might happen. Ben Stong, Washington reporter, told us about some very interesting visits with the Canadians for a higher world wheat price. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for today is something to think about.